In this next section, we're going to look at something called the law of signs. And this is something you might want to take some notes on off to the side somewhere. You're going to want to look back on this formula and be able to reference it. The law of signs says that if you take any side and its opposite angle, such as, let's go ahead and label this diagram right here and call this angle A. And if that's angle A, then we're going to call this side over here little a. This is similar to some things we did earlier in the year. And let's say that this over here is angle B. This would be uh, side B. And you could do the same thing. You could create a C and a side C. Now what it says with the law of sines is that for any triangle, if you take the sine of one of the angles over its opposite side, so sine of the angle over its opposite side, and you uh, can set it equal then to the sine of any other angle over its opposite side. Sine of any angle over its opposite side. So we're going to try out a few examples now. On number seven here, it says find measure of angle S. Now we see that we have a side 34 that matches up with an angle, 127. We also have a side 20 that matches up with angle S. Now we don't know what S is, but we know that they're paired. We're supposed to figure out what S is, so we're supposed to find S. To do that then, we could set up the ratio, the sine of angle S is divided by the side opposite it, which is 20, is equal to the sine of 127, because we're given that angle, divided by 34, the opposite side. So we can set up that ratio. And once we have that set up, we need to solve for S. We need to get S alone. And in order to do that, since it's in a sine, we need to get sine S alone. First thing we do is multiply both sides by 20. If we multiply both sides by 20, then these 20s will cancel out, giving us just sine s over on this side. Now, to undo a sine, you need to take an inverse sine. So we would need to take the entirety of both sides and take the sine inverse of both sides. Now, the sine inverse and the sine over here are going to cancel each other out. It's like multiplication and division. They undo each other. So we're just left with angle S on the left, which is what we want. And on the right, we have a big, complicated mess. So when you type this into your calculator, you're going to want to make sure you're careful to use lots of parentheses. So we're going to have our sine inverse of, and that's where we open our first parenthesis, then we're going to take our sine of 127, throw the parentheses around that, times 20 divided by 34, and keep that all in parentheses. And if we do that, when we type it in, we will get 28.02 degrees. So make sure you got that same answer and you're following these same steps. Now let's go back to the original problem and see what this really means. It says find the measurement in indicated around to the nearest tenth. Now if we're rounding the nearest tenth, we're trying to round to this place right here. We have a two after it, so we're going to round down. Uh, so we're going to say our angle, because it is an angle, it's angle S, is equal to 28.0 degrees. And that will be our final answer. Now, that one's a pretty tough one. The same rules apply when you are finding a side length. And we're going to look at that in the context of one of these problems down below. But for this one, uh, before we start, we are told to solve each triangle. To solve a triangle means go all the way. It means we need to find every side 
every angle. So this one is kind of a multi-part problem. So we're going to do number 12. We see here that we have an angle and then there's an opposite side which is unknown. We also have an ang or a side, an opposite angle which is unknown. And then an angle here and an opposite side which is unknown. So it looks like when we set this up, we have no pairs, which is a big problem. We need at least one pair in order to solve it. We can't have two unknowns and be able to figure out the answer. Fortunately, this is a triangle. So we know one thing about triangles that they add up to 180 degrees when you put all the angles together. And since we know two of the three angles of the triangle, we can figure out the third. So we can figure out what angle D actually is. And if we take 180 and we take away that 36 and we take away that 30, that's going to leave us with 114 degrees for angle D. And we can work backwards and check that, add that all back up, and it will add up to 180. So we have 114 degrees. So now we do have one pair, our purple pair. We can choose whether we want to solve the red or the blue pair uh, with the purple pair uh, first, and we'll do the other one second. So we'll start with one, and then we'll do the other. Now, when I originally wrote out law of sines earlier, I always put the sine on top. I put the sine of, in this case, 114 degrees on top, and then 42 on bottom. Since my unknown is going to be a side, it's going to be a lot easier to solve the problem if I put the uh, side lengths on top. Whatever your unknown thing is, if you put that on top, it's going to be a lot easier. There's a lot fewer steps in solving it. So we're going to do that. And I'm deciding I'm going to solve the blue pair first. So I'm going to give this a name. This is going to be little e, because it's across from angle e. And little e divided by the sine of 30. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of 30. So multiply by sine 30 over here, multiply by sine 30 over here. These will divide against each other, cancel each other out. And I'm going to be left with my answer over on this side if I just type that into my calculator. So 42 times sine 30 divided by sine 114. Now if your calculator gives you a starting parenthesis, make sure you close it on all of these because if you don't, there's a good chance that it will miscalculate your answer for you. Is our uh, side length. And so this is not in degrees because we have a length. E is a side length. So not measured in degrees. We would go 25.7. When we calculate these, it's always good to make sure that these sides seem reasonable. We have a side length of 42 across from an angle of 114. So the biggest angle has the biggest side across from it. Over here, a 30. Uh, has a smaller side across from it, 25. Still seems reasonable given the size of our numbers, so it looks like we're doing the right thing. So now we just have to repeat this one more time. So this can be a long problem, but that's all right. I would always start with the one that we knew, the pair that we knew originally, the, the purple one. So 42 over sine 114. The reason you wouldn't want to start with, let's say, the number you just calculated at 25.7 is because you rounded that answer and then if you round again uh, that double rounding is going to cause your answer to be off quite a bit. Now we never gave this a label. Angle F is across from side F. So we're going to say side F over sine of 36 degrees. Again our goal is to get the side length F alone, so we're going to multiply both sides by the thing that we have on the bottoms. If you're wondering why we're not taking an inverse sine, 
The only time that you would take an inverse sine is when you want to get the thing inside of the sine alone, like that 36. If we wanted to get that 36 alone, we would take an inverse sine. We want to get f alone, and f is not trapped inside of a sine, so there's no need to take an inverse. So that's why we're not doing that. So again, we've got to multiply both sides on top by sine of 36. When we do that over here, top and bottom of the fraction, they will cancel out, leaving you with just f. And over here, this whole thing uh, is going to be our answer if we multiply it out. So again, when you type it in your calculator, you have a 42 times the sine of 36 divided by the sine of 114. Again, if you have parentheses, make sure you close them on your calculator. Don't leave those open. Plug it in. And our calculator says we get 27.023. So rounding that to the nearest tenth, 27.0. Again, not a uh, angle measure. It's a side length. So it is going to be a number, not in degrees. 27.0. 36 degrees is bigger than 30 degrees, so it should be a little bit bigger than side E, and it is. So now if we're writing our answers here, just to clarify, uh, we would say that D, angle D, is equal to 114 degrees. Uh, side E is equal to 25.7. And side F is equal to uh, 27 point zero. The only reason we didn't round 114 to the nearest tenth is because it actually came out exactly to 114. So no need to round there. And that's how you solve these law of signs problems.